This band always tickles me in the best places. Hello everybody, Adam here. I am a professionally trained audio engineer as well as metal guitarist and today I'm going to be checking out a brand new single by Dance Gavin Dance called Strawberries Wake. Uh, they just put this song out very recently. I have not heard it yet so I'm pretty stoked to dive in on this and hear what type of craziness that Dance Gavin Dance is about to throw into my ear holes. So let's just dive into this and I'll tell you what I think. Adam from the future here, telling everybody that this video was very funny and I got distracted a lot. So, if you want to hear more of my professional analysis, uh, wait until the end of the music video and I kind of dive more into it. I spent a lot of this video laughing, which is very professional of me. Anyway, <laughs> thank you. On to the music video we go. Oh, that's very, very beautiful. Alright, electric guitar, hard left, hard right. Where have my friends all gone? Really cool uh, effects on Tillian's voice. A lot of harmony. Okay. A lot of panning on his voice. Hard left, hard right, and center. Like, there are some vocals that are like... <laughs> <laughs> I can't expect anything less from these guys. I want John Mess to be my flight attendant all day, every day. Really cool rider work. That's awesome. Again, two completely different parts happening in the electric rider for the electric guitar. Bass is very prominent in the center of the mix. I really like how Killian's voice is mixed. I mentioned this last time that uh, his voice sounds like so much better than the previous album. They, they took out some of his presence because he's such an airy singer. I really like how his voice sounds on this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dance Gavin Dance keeps on distracting me from the music. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Back to the music. Really good. Uh, Crunch tone in the right ear, completely separate tone in the left ear for the um, for the electric guitar. <laughs> See, Will Swan is a bougie ass person. It makes me it makes me laugh. I really like um, the screaming vocals. They're n they, they have some. Uh... <laughs> uh. Come on, Eric. <laughs> what the heck is happening in, in this video? I'll have to give you my personal thoughts after this. I'm having too much fun watching this video. <laughs> okay. I had a feeling that was going to happen where I was going to be too into the music video to actually talk about it during the song. 
A. So let's go ahead and talk about the song. Um, I know I was laughing through most of it because this band always tickles me in the best places. So uh, let's talk about the electric guitars first. Uh, Will Swan is master man uh, with his effects and choices that he does. So uh, in my last video, I talked a lot about how they use different uh, electric guitars parts. Like actually, like the notes they're playing are very different, and that's what gives a lot of Dance Gavin Dance their uh, core sound. So a lot of the times, left ear and right ear are doing completely different things, and it makes the music incredibly interesting. So it's a good production choice. I also really like how, for most of the time, the electric guitar parts are hard left, hard right, almost all the time. And uh, I, I mentioned something earlier that was slightly incorrect, so I'm going to change what I said right now. So, uh, Tillian's vocals at the beginning part, where all the harmony was happening before the song came in, I said uh, the vocals were hard left and hard right, they were not. So they had vocals in the center, then they have vocals at what seemed like about 50% left and about 50% right, and then they had reverb and delay going on 100% left, 100% right. So basically what that means is if you're, if you look at music uh, as a stereo image, so this is how I always look at music and analyze music. Music for me does not happen in just the left ear or the right ear. There's a whole sphere that I picture. And so, uh, his vocals were hard center. And then he had vocals that were about right here, about 50% left and 50% right. And then they had the effects on his vocals, uh, hard left and hard right. Now that's very normal. You're, you're gonna uh, want the wet effects a lot of the time just to be hard left and hard right, just to fill out the space. I'm going to mention Tillian's EQ one more time because it's worth mentioning because it sounds so much better than the last album. I know I kind of hammered on this a lot in my previous video, but I'm just gonna say it one more time. Uh, the way they EQ'd his voice, and maybe it was also a different uh, microphone choice, Maybe, I, I, because I don't know what microphones they use to record this, I don't know if they used any cool like preamps or pre-EQ on his voice, but whatever they did, uh, his voice sounds a lot better. On the last album, it felt like Tillian was just in my face just like breathing on me. That's like kind of how I felt like his vocals were. His singing was phenomenal, so don't get me wrong on that, guys. Tillian is a great singer, I just didn't like all the air. Because it almost sounded like I could feel the air coming at me. And I don't get that same sense from this. So what they did was they lowered his presence. Uh, so that's gonna be up in the like high, high, high-end EQ. Seems like they brought that down a little bit, or it's also likely that they used a microphone that, um, that as a spectrum analysis, uh, maybe doesn't boost as much in the high-end, and maybe it actually cuts a little bit. If I were producing Tilian, or if I had like a list of microphones to choose from, I probably wouldn't go with a microphone that has a lot of boost at the 3000 hertz and higher range. I would want to make his voice more warm uh, by using a microphone that dips down in that range just a little bit. Of course, you can fix that later on with, with EQ. It is also very possible that they used a preamp uh, to kind of mellow out his high end as well. Uh, and then when they captured his performance, uh, they could have just printed that already. So that's also another way that they, that they could have handled that. Anyway, that's kind of what I'm most impressed about here, is uh, Tillian's voice. I, th I think that's like the takeaway from the whole mix, really, is just how good his voice is. And how good his voice sounds compared to the other album. 
Um, the, scre the screaming vocals were really on point. Uh, at, on at some point, they were actually quite loud in the mix. It might take a bit more listen, like more than one listen, for me to kind of judge exactly how high in the mix it is. But my first impression was uh, the screaming vocals were really hot. And uh, they did something that you normally don't see a lot with screaming vocals. Especially not in like this genre of music. They, they added like a little bit of delay and a little bit of reverb to his vocals actually. Especially uh, when he's like emphasizing uh, some parts. I think it was during the bridge where he was like uh, kind of like moving his scream up a little bit to, to emphasize something. They, it sounds, it sounded to me like what they did was they automated some reverb and chorus to peak at that part right when he peaks. And then they brought it down so it's a little bit more dry. And then they automated it again. So every time he kind of hit that high, high, high scream, uh, the reverb and delay will kind of turn on. Then it'll go down a little bit, turn on, and then go down a little bit. So I, I think that that was a great production uh, choice. So good, good job on that. Uh, the drums sounded phenomenal as well. Um, a little bit of an issue that I had with their previous album, just from a sonic standpoint, was I thought their drums were too low in the mix. Um, the way I like to mix drums is having the snare drum, the kick drum, and the vocals all sit at about the same volume sonically. And on the last album, the drums were very much in, in the background. Um, I like how in your face the drums are on this track and also the previous track as well. So really, really good job on that. The bass was really, really solid. Um, I really like how high they have the, the bass mixed inside uh, their songs. It has a really good center bass, really powerful tone. Even when the kick drum is going, you can still very clearly uh, hear the bass part. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm always excited when I can actually hear the bass properly in, in a metal song. And sometimes it's hard to do, depending on, on the subgenre. Again, another banger. Uh, Dance Gavin Dance is quite amazing at, at their craft. They have, to, they have top tier engineers for sure. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I do have a Patreon. It is in the uh, top link of my description below. I got some pretty cool perks, so go down there and check it out if you're interested in, in super subscribing. It would help me out greatly. Uh, hit the sub button as well. Hit the bell button. Hit the like button. Leave me a comment. Uh, if you're liking my, my content, make sure you give me some different bands to check out. I have a whole massive word file of bands right now that people have been telling me, so I'm slowly getting through them. Alrighty, so thank you guys again. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.